All right, so let's move on to the photo guide of the mosses. And this guide is broken down into vegetation zones along an elevational gradient. So in the foothill zones, we can have chaparral, blue oak, California buckeye woodland. This is a Mediterranean climate, so hot, dry summers, cool, wet winters. The conifer zone, starting with incense cedar, dogwood, ponderosa pine, and then moving on, Jeffrey pine, sugar pine, white fir, giant sequoia. And then finally in the alpine or subalpine regions, lodgepole and foxtail pine. All right, so starting with the foothill, so from 2,000 to 4,000 feet. So let's imagine you're on a hike through the foothills in the lower elevations, perhaps oak buckeye woodland, with trees casting lots of shade, and you come across a blue oak. What might you find on a blue oak? Well, our first species would be very common at the base. This is Dendroalcea abiotina. Grows on shady oak trunks and has large flat stems when wet and has almost a feathery-like appearance. And then when dry, the leaves curve down. Now our next species is another tree trunk moss. This is Tarragonium gracile. It's also known as the birdfoot moss and it has these attenuating or tapering branches. So both Tarragonium gracile and Dendroalcea abiotina have that feathery look and that is called plumos. Then we have Anatrichia californica. It can also be found on soil and rock. And this is a large moss. It's very uncommon south of the Sierra. Our next example is a member of the family Podiaceae. And this is Centrichia princeps. The leaf has these hyaline awns. Now next, if we move on to the upper sections of the trunk, the next moss is very commonly found in crevices on the trunk where the main branches split. This is Fabronia pusilla. It's a tiny pleurocarp. It has chalice-shaped sporophytes. And it has a silvery appearance to it, and that is due to these ciliate projections along the leaf margin. Okay, so moving along in our hike, we come along a shaded soil bank. If you can imagine the soil slope, you would likely encounter Cleopodium whippleanum. There's clay in the name, and has these chain-like stems. Then often co-occurring with Cleopodium whippleanum. We have Scleropodium cespitans. This is an unresolved species with potentially more than one being currently called Scleropodium cespitans. Our next species is Timiella anomala, another member of the family Podiaceae, grows in mo moist shaded soil and has a bright green color. And that is due to the many cell layers in the leaf or the multistratus layering of the leaf. We have Wysia controversia, same habitat as Timiella but smaller, and again, Podiaceae. So hopefully when you see the basil rosette, you might guess as to what family this species belongs. And this is Alawina ambigua, another member of the family Podiaceae. It has a thick appearance to the leaves and no awns. The next species is an ephemeral moss. And this is Pleuridium subulatum. It grows on flat soil or soil banks and it has recessed bright orange sporophyte. It's very characteristic of an ephemeral moss. Our next soil bank moss is Physidin sublumbatus. Grows in moist, shaded soil in crevices in a slope. And that is opposed to our other species of Physidens. This is Physidens varieties, which would grow on wet soil slopes, often in contact with running water, and it has that characteristic iris leaf pattern. 
All right, so now on our hike, let's say we come upon a rock outcrop. What will we find as we move into chaparral and pass an exposed sunny rock outcrop? So our first species, Hedwigia detonza, is a quintessential moss found in rock outcrops. It's a newly recognized species. It grows on the sides of boulders and has a grayish color to it. While Hedwigia was found on the sides of boulders, our next moss is very common to the tops of boulders. And this is Grimia levigata. It has long hair points, giving it a characteristic look. Now, our, our upcoming species has a similar branching pattern to Hedwigia detonza, but opposed to the grayish color, it has a greenish brown color. And that is Pseudobrownia californica. So it has this greenish color. It's endemic to the western states and it is related to Hedwigia. Now we will introduce a moss that has a world or cosmopolitan distribution. And this is Grimia pulvinata. It grows in clumps of small round tufts and it has these long white or hyaline hair points and these curving seda when immature. All right, our next species, Grimia lissae. Growing in more shady portions of a boulder or rock, it grows in loose tufts and has kind of a curved pinwheel-like appearance. Another cosmopolitan moss that, beyond rock outcrops, grows in streets and sidewalk cracks in urban areas, and that is Bryum argentium, also known as the silvery moss, it has that characteristic, beautiful silvery color. So we've passed out of the chaparral and come around a bend. Let's imagine rocks tucked in a slope, shaded by trees, it may have soil mixed in or over the rock. We might find Tortula muralis, another member of the family Podiaceae. The rule of thumb is that tortulas are smaller centricias, and the leaves look thick and are papillos, and papilla are small bumps on the surface of a leaf. And we can, we can see that here in cross-section, those bumps that appear on the surface. This moss is also very common in calcareous substrate. Now if we have rock or soil covering over that rock, We can find Anacolia bowerii, and it has a cylindrical capsule. And that is opposed to Anacolia menziesii. It's like shadier locations, and it has a very rounded capsule. Next, we have another species of Tortula. This is Tortula atrovirens. It grows on soil. It has a green leaf with reddish tips. And also, there is a thickened region at the tip also, we can see that it has no hair point. Okay, so if you have a rock wall, a vertical or possibly an overhang, it would be very possible to find this species here. This is Gymnostomum calcarium. Very common to uh, overhang habitats. And it occurs in one continuous dense layer. Our next genus is also very common to exposed rock walls. And this is Gemma Bryum, also an unresolved genus. All right, then this will be our last moss for the foothills. This is Hygrohypnum smithii, found in streams and rivers often associated with waterfalls or in crevices of rock with fast flowing water. The stems are dark and they have a wiry appearance. Okay, liverworts, very characteristic of moist soils. The soil can be surrounding a rock outcrop and seasonally moist. So our first species we have is Astorella palmarii. This is a thallus liverwort, so we have that flattened body, very common in Mediterranean regions, with leafy liverworts common in more wet climates and has a dichotomous branching pattern. Our next liverwort, Fossombronia longicida, the thallus has a very characteristic butterleaf lettuce appearance. And 
And then finally we have Rixia trichocarpa, again a thallus liverwort, and has an oval, oblong thallus with hairs at the tip and along the margins. All right, now climbing an elevation to the conifer zone, so approximately 5,000 to 8,000 feet, and there's no sharp delineation between zones, and this first species is a perfect example, and is also found in the foothills. And this species is Amphidium californicum. It has a very specific microhabitat at the bases of rock walls, and this long leaf highly curled when dry, and that's called crispate. And then we have Orthotricum lyellii. You can see these reddish dots. Those are gemmy, and those are vegetative propagules. It's very common on tree trunks and branches. And then we have Myotricum lyellii. It's found on the forest floor among the shade of firs and pines, often on the soil or on the base of trees. 